Hello, my name is Host Talk. I am the host talking with famous people, and we are here now with some people in the room, in the always open room, including one individual named Tam Tam. And Tam Tam says she has questions about type. Okay, so I am an INFP. I am um, my I shadow function. INFP. Okay. Okay. Uh, my inferior function is TE. Uh, now, when I was 19, to, from 15 to 19, I was very organized in time and space. Every time I make a schedule, I commit to it. I never break break it. Uh, I'm always organized in my things in my room. But so TE is uh, I, the TE is well developed uh, since it concerns. Uh, organizing for efficiency and all. That's but SI. From 20... What? That's SI, what you're talking about. That's not TE. That's SI. TE is not actually about protocols. It's about making systems understood to others. What you're talking about, organizing your own room and keeping your own stuff together, that's introverted sensing. And that's in your third slot. You should expect to be pretty good at that and get better as you get older. I'm getting worse in it, <laughs> especially on time. Uh, yes, so I don't get it. How old are you now? I'm 27. Okay. Well, I will tell you that the following thing. I was good at FE through high school. I took a dive in college and coming out of college in FE. That's my third function. And I've gotten slowly better at it ever since. And I think the reason for it is with all functions, or not all functions, but some of the functions, but not all of the functions, that the transition from, from our various life expectations from childhood to adolescence to adulthood means that we have to change the ways that we use that function. And even though we're good at using that function in general, we have to adjust to um, to use it for a new purpose. And so it, that part can be difficult. Like once I had a kid, my FE shifted up substantially because not because I was better with FE, because I started using things available to me as FE tools, like having a little kid with me, right? It gave me things to talk about. All of a sudden, I'm much more effective with FE. It's not I'm better at it. It's that life is more supportive of it at that moment. Does that resonate with you at all with the SI? <laughs> is, is SI also responsible for uh, the organization in time, in schedule, uh, and things like that? Yeah, that's SI. It, I, th I think of SI as introverted sensing is your understanding of yourself as an identity that exists over time. This also means that to, do, to have good SI means to have a clear sense of where you're going, where you've been, what you're doing that is lined up with like a calendar, you know? And so... In fact, I, I, I noticed that uh, more and more of my studies become more difficult. SI is becoming um, is becoming fragile. It's become uh, it's not uh, useful anymore like it was. Uh, when I I uh, I started my medical uh, studies, it was efficient for the first year. Then after that, uh, I never commit to a schedule. Uh, in time, I was very disorganized. It was chaos, yeah. It was, uh, well, I don't understand what changed it. How much external organization are you doing versus internal? What I mean by this is for the INFP to use SI successfully, they need to use it to organize their schedule to largely keep it free of stuff that is encumbering upon them. They need to structure their lives such that they have a lot of free time and they need to additionally structure their home spaces so they're comfortable, they're clean, 
so they can feel good about themselves. They have their finances in order so they feel safe. And then try to schedule away too much responsibility to accomplish things. It sounds like you're trying to achieve on some level. IN, INFP type 3 doesn't work. Okay. I think I got overwhelmed because I didn't have much free time. I, I never schedule free time in my... Uh, I never go out. I never have fun time. I, uh, so uh, it's maybe that. You're meant to play, Tam Tam. You and me both. We're play. Play people. We like to play. Uh, I, I, I get to play all the time. Right? I'm, I play all the time. I'm very happy because I'm playing. I'm not happy because I'm achieving... I'm achieving so that I can play, that I can be happy. And so what I'd say is you are trying to fulfill some standard set for you by somebody other than you. INTPs, you recognize the validity of all persons regardless of their level of achievement. And so I don't know what you're studying or what you're trying to become professionally, but if it's if it requires a lot of rigorous application of uh, boring shit, you're going to hate it. What I want to become is not really a choice. I study medicine, so I, I need to be a, a doctor. That's uh, <laughs> an event way to go. So. Okay, listen. If it's, not, if it's not your choice, whose life is it? It was the choice. It was my choice in the beginning. But I think uh, I was shocked by the hard work, and I didn't expect it. It's not worth it. it, it it's absolutely not worth it to spend all that time learning something hard that you're not going to enjoy doing this. I think what you'll enjoy about it, it, it sounds like you're far along in the process. There's no point in quitting now, I guess. But um, it's what you'll enjoy about it is is the stuff you could enjoy just as much in another career that requires a lot less work. Now, you wouldn't get paid as well. You wouldn't have as much social esteem, but INFPs, frankly, don't care about that stuff very much. Yes, I don't really care about it, but I, I care about what I can give people, What? Uh, how can I help them. So, I mean, uh, I can bear with uh, hard work, then I will uh, be useful someday. Especially that I like psychiatry, so... Uh, psychiatry is cool, uh, but look, okay, how many more years do you have before you're actually practicing? It depends, uh, because uh, the system here in Tunisia is not like uh, your system in America. I have maximum, maximum five years to begin practicing uh, psychiatry if I can get it. You have a maximum of five years to begin practicing after what? There is an exam. If I can if I succeed it, I can get to residency in like. <coughs> Are you ready to take the test? <coughs> yes, I need to take a test to succeed to get in a psychiatry residency. Do you expect to pass the test? I think if I I become organized more, I can pass the test. But I'm I'm wasting so much time. So much time. So wait, do you, how many things do you have to do before you actually take and pass the test? Besides take and pass the test. What do you mean? I, I don't get. It. Can you take and pass the test tomorrow? Uh, no, no. Uh, I have to pass my internship. One year of internship. Uh, I, I became. In, uh, I. It started in January. Then after that one year. I take the test. Okay, well, and how much have you already done? How many years of work have you already done on it? it that's, that's specifically about the medical I, stuff. Okay, I, I've done uh, five years of medical stuff. It was uh, only uh, fundamental knowledge and uh, some rounds in uh, the hospital. Then we enter the internship for one year. Then we take the residency test, and we choose a specialty. Well, I mean, I think you need to do it then. 
You've already done all the work. I think I need to do it. But... What? You've already done all the work. Yes, I know, but it's it's a difficult test, and I need to be organized and methodical. So I have yeah. the knowledge, and I think I can give hey. you hard work. Hey, Tam Tam, listen. You're going to be yeah. fine on the test. You're going to be fine. I'll tell you why. Because what you have at your disposal here is extroverted intuition in the second slot with loose can and TI. I have experience with INFPs. They're crazy smart. You wouldn't expect them to be, but they're crazy smart. They just don't ever value that. So it, what you want you to do is when you go to that test, just remember that you have an advantage over all uh, most of your test taking mates, which is you've got extroverted intuition as your tool function and TI will be firing cannonballs out all day. You got no problem with that test. You'll know this shit. It'll be there. You'll, you'll be in the test and you'll be like, oh, I don't know where, I, I don't remember that. Oh, that's the answer. Well, how did I remember that? I don't know. It just came to me. You know, it's like, that's how it works, right? You'll find that you don't, you might not be able to know in advance how and why you're going to do well on the test, but you'll do fine. You'll be, you'll do fine on the test. Once, don't stress about the test. Just review lightly. Don't study hard. Don't organize your shit carefully. Be like, I'm going to organize this part of my life. Like me, when I said, I'm going to clean the bathroom one day. And I totally cleaned the bathroom. But if I say to myself, I'm going to clean today. I'm going to clean the house today. I'll never clean anything, right? So you got you to gotta narrow your SI in the same fashion. You got to be like, I'm not going to worry about that test. I'll organize this shit that attends to the this big thing that's not so it's not so uh, hard, but that's specific. Like I got to make sure I, I cross this T and dot that I. Cross the T and dot the I. Don't worry about the test. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I did. Do you have other questions? I want to get host uh, Tim in here to to roll on the next one. Are you uh, prepping? Uh, are you prepping anything? Do we have a topic for this, that video that's upcoming here with us, Tim? I can't I hear I don't you. have uh, another question. About... Okay. You talking to me if I have any suggestions prepped? The uh, answer okay. is no. Okay, fine. That's fine. So anyway, uh, I want to make sure I finish up with Tam Tam by saying, do you have anything else that you'd like to ask about typing, about anything in the world or anything you'd like to tell us that you didn't get a chance to already say. I want to make sure you get to speak as much as you want here because I know I'm, I have a problem with that. I don't have questions, but if you, I, I know you are curious about uh, other countries, about other culture, if you have some questions about Tunisia, for example, or not religion, Tunisia, because I saw your uh, videos of gotcha. religion and gotcha. <laughs> Like them. Hey, I'm glad you brought this up because I want to. I want to point something else. I want to take this opportunity to. Oh my God, that's great. Um, I want to. Um, oh, that's that's fantastic. Okay, so there you are. Uh, I do want to say this about stuff in general. As I was reflecting the other night and reflecting about religion videos and stuff like that, I absolutely do not regret any of the videos I put up already. But I absolutely also am not about that topic, right? That's not what this channel is about. It's not about uh, being mad at religion. I, I'm not mad at religion, and I consider myself a theist as well. And uh, I have faith. I'm a person of faith. At least I engage in the behavior of prayer. I am not looking to bash religion. I'm not looking to bash anything. And so the, what I realized personally is that I do I have no desire to talk about that topic uh, for the foreseeable future and uh, eventually it'll probably come up again but I want to clarify that okay so now I do have some questions about Tunisia is it near yes. castle is it near Morocco they are both in North uh, Africa but uh, Tunisia is between uh, Algeria and Libya not uh, Morocco but they are both in North Africa um, Libya. So, okay, Tunisia. Have you had problems with Libya? Where have you been like Libya, Libya, Libya? Um, or are you friends with the Libya? Border. 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you say that again? We have to be friends with Libya because we have some uh, financial uh, interaction, if I say, if I can say. But we had some problems in the beginning of Libya revolution, uh, when uh, the refugees uh, came to, uh, to South uh, Tunisia because we have borders there. We had some problems, yes. But now I think uh, uh, the region is more uh, peaceful and uh, the issue is, there, is stable now. If I may say. Um, okay, that's a good question, Barry. So, when you when the refugees were coming, when the when the I'm sorry, say again. In Libya now, the problems are um, more complicated, but we are not really uh, touched by them. For now, I don't know oh. if uh, in the oh. future something will happen. Okay, let me go back to Tunisia. So, Tunisia is not a country that I hear about a whole hell of a lot in the United States. They don't pop up in the news as much as some of the other countries in the region, kind of like Morocco, right? Morocco and uh, Libya, I'm not, Morocco and Tunisia are both countries that'll come up one time for every 10 times Libya comes up. One time for every 50 times oh, Egypt comes up. Four years ago, Obama standed in the Congress uh, applauding the uh, Tunisian revolution. So uh, I think four or five years ago. I, I'm not saying Tunisia doesn't have stuff going on. I'm not trying to say there's nothing going on in Tunisia. I'm just saying, from an American's perspective, here's the, here's the knowledge I have coming in. I, as a debate coach, I'm much more knowledgeable about this region than most people. And I read Google News regularly. I see the headlines. Like, I make note of these sort of things. So I will tell you... To the extent that the United States media, and even on Google News, the American edition of Google News, to the extent to which it covers things that go on in Egypt, it does so at a hundred times the amount that does Morocco, and that Tunisia is somewhere in between. I never hear about Morocco. Morocco uh, just doesn't make the news. Much happening in Tunisia to talk about uh, for now. Not some events that are uh, internationally interesting to talk about. Okay, so you had a revolution, is that right? Uh, five, six years ago, we started the revolution in the Middle East. <laughs> so you guys, you guys began the Arab Spring, right? Yes. All right. So my question then is this: Since that revolution has occurred, has there been a transfer of power? Mm -hmm. There has. What? What's the question? Has there been an election or a transfer of power since the revolution? Yes, twice. Okay. Uh, the first good. one. Good. Yes, with elections and uh, democratic elections. So, uh, how think... how are you? How satisfied are you with your leaders? This is a difficult question because me, I'm what you call a radical Muslim, if I may say. You're I don't, uh, I don't, what you call a little bit radical in my thoughts. So I, I am never satisfied with the, the leaders. I didn't uh, go to the elections. Uh, not the first time, not the second time, not in Ben Ali uh, in the dictator uh, regime. I don't uh, practice. I don't go to elections, uh, okay. and I'm not satisfied with the regime I, that I, exists right I, now. I cannot tell you right now. I cannot tell you <laughs> what your opinion about your government is, because as far as I can tell, you didn't just. Yeah, you just said nothing right there. I don't know. I can't. What is your opinion about your government? Do you like it or not like it? I don't. Why don't I like it? You, you don't like it, or you like it? I don't like it. You don't like it. You don't like it because it's no, too. Do you dislike it because it's too authoritarian, or do you not like it because it's not authoritarian enough? I dislike it because. Um, uh, 
uh, hypocrisy in, in the uh, in the application of the rules. Okay, so there's not equal there's not equal protection under the law. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the people they like, or the people, uh, or the uh, what we call. Uh, I can't express it well, but uh, we have the same problem here, you know. Hypocrisy. We have the same problem yes, here. Yes, I know. Because the police, they don't give each other tickets. They don't arrest each other. They won't prosecute each other for crimes. They're like a, an aristocracy. Well, I I, it, all countries have corruption is a big problem. Go, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Can you? Yeah, you're kind of choppy, but I can we can hear you. I wanted to say, because we'll probably have the same kind of regime here, which is, it's like there is a constitution and there are laws and everything, but you can always get, get away with anything you want. You know, you can bribe, everything is bribable, if I can say. Mm. Or there is a law, but it, it's not always applicable upon everybody. It's like some exactly. people, so much the law doesn't apply on everybody. Yeah, yes. Corruption is exactly. a poison, for sure. Corruption is a poison upon society because it encourages even and ever more seizing of control from the individual on justifications that are really just uh, a costume to put over uh, kleptocracy, a desire to steal from the people. Even if you don't want to say it encourages, you can't say that it doesn't discourage that. Well, it makes it profitable. Yeah. I'd call that encouragement. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. About Tunisia and Morocco, I don't. I feel as though I don't know what questions to ask. You guys tell me what questions would you like me to ask about your countries? I don't know. What are you curious about? Uh, any culture? I don't know what you want to know exactly. Do you have 7 Eleven? I got a question. All right, go ahead, Dev. <laughs> I would like to hear some idioms from your country. Here's an example. Here's an example so you guys understand. That's a great, great job, Tiffany. I'll explain to make sure you guys understand. We have an expression in America. It's raining cats and dogs. It's not actually raining cats and dogs, obviously. It's just raining a lot. Do you have weird expressions like that that you could share with us, the transliteration of it? We have a shit ton of those. A lot. I hate them. Very difficult. Well, you want to transliterate. Okay, so let, me, let, me let me let me try something. For example, in Portuguese, I don't know how to say it in Portuguese, but there's a phrase called uh, to wag the helmet, and it means to dance. There is an expression. I think I'm for now. Being being on the the string. Being on the string? What does that mean? You're yeah. on the string. Or being, being on the wire. I'm on the wire. I'm on the string. What is, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, it's a good thing. I'm I'm good on the wire. Be... Yeah, I'm on the string. What's going on, yeah. Ahmed? I'm on the wire. You on the wire? You on the string? Yeah. I think I think it came from. I'm not sure about where it came from, but probably it came from the birds since they are in the wires, electric wires. And they like can fly and stuff. Maybe that's where it came from. I'm not sure though. Um, what's what's it mean though? Maybe in, in a good place. Oh, you're in a good place. You mean you're in an advantageous position? It means you're you're not worrying about anything. You're having a good life and stuff like that. Oh, so you're carefree and you're not you're not concerned about yeah, things hurting carefree. you. Interesting. You got one for us, Tam Tam? I don't have nothing. I have nothing in mind for now. Okay. Last quick topic before we end this video. Does anybody have a suggestion to get out 
or anything that we ought to suggest to host Tim as he leads us in the next episode. I I have a couple things. Oh, uh, you're ready to go. Okay, fine. No problem then. Never mind. Tim's ready to go. He's like, hey, hey, hey. get the fuck out, dude. <laughs> Chill. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Awesome. I know, that's Chill. cool. Good. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Bye.